<coughs> sorry. Um, uh, at least what I'm going to talk about is encouraging early air tightness testing by craft, uh, craftsmen. This is something that is, uh, has been quite uh, interesting to see and study in a way. Okay. Uh, what I would like to do is just to start to summarize. Uh, a large portion of Norwegian small and medium-sized builder firms do airtight testing themselves, and they are you now to a high extent using simplified equipment. I'll talk a bit about this uh, simplified equipment. Uh, and also, I will talk about something that I think is more uh, is quite special here in Norway, is uh, doing early stage measurements. The cons of this, and uh, what makes this interesting, is that these firms that do this uh, uh, testing themselves uh, avoid unpleasant experiences at take over time. And I'm going to uh, uh, talk a bit about uh, this. But this is a very important part of the motivation. There's some uh, small uh, things about uh, leg leg legislation in Norway. What to happen soon is that uh, uh, third-party documentation of air tightness is going to be uh, enforced for all new dwellings, and a lot of you know tension in the building industry connected to this. Uh, to repeat for those of you who don't know, uh, we have um, 50 uh, requirements in our building code. Have a, 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 say a less ambitious uh, uh, requirement than uh, all things, let's say. These have requirements uh, for quite many years, actually. In Norway, few buildings have actually been measured recently, and I say we believe <coughs> because many of these data are. Uh, spread around in in uh, in the local firms. Bursts of measurements uh, and the governmental funding of low energy houses documentation by measuring, and this was a very very good uh, initiative that I think uh, <coughs> lifted uh, the, the the level uh, here in Norway. Uh, have been some sporadic measurements for quite a long time, and many of them have led uh, to uh, what we would regard as high leakage values. Uh, um, back that would uh, mean be having a safety value uh, uh, increasing uh, for uh, air changes per hour at 50 pascal. Consequences was that these firms had very costly repair and very uh, costly documentation processes afterwards, and this was uh, sometimes very heavy burdens on these uh, firms. They uh, worked; uh, they cooperated, and uh, a um, initiative came from a, uh, mem a big. Um, uh, gathering of these builders, the Norwegian uh, Home Builder Association, they organize about 60% of the, uh, uh, let's say, building uh, volume uh, when it comes to uh, dwellings in Norway. There are some nice initiatives, and I'll talk about them. Uh, one is uh, that they uh, did some training of leaders of their firms. Uh, developing suitable low-cost uh, uh, equipment, and they implemented this. Uh, I call it training by doing uh, uh, for craftsmen, and this is an ongoing uh, process. And I just add a link to uh, to this uh, association. I'll talk about uh, the 
uh, traders uh, we were visited but leaders from uh, membership firms attended a crash course <coughs> we had this box in our laboratory it uh, had different kinds of uh, fans and a test wall this is a outer of a, a typical norwegian uh, wall gypsum board a window mounted the leak level in this wall with in range of a passive house standard. So the visitors uh, in the Norwegian Building Research Institute labor laboratories hands-on training, and this literally, because leaders climbed on this ladder you see here and used their hands to locate leakages there in this wall. They could feel the leakages even at a level of passive house standard when this box pressurized to 50 Pascal. With other additional things like uh, adding smoke to the leakages and, and also demonstrating uh, equipment for measurement, different kinds of equ equipment. Uh, had a short course uh, in what can be observed using uh, thermographic equipment. We have some details, many details in way, and some of them are full to workmanship. We just have to say that. This thermographic uh, picture of uh, the ceiling of a typical uh, detail in, 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 in Norway, in Norwegian wooden uh, dwellings. Thesis is that thorough design is necessary, but it is not sufficient. A measuring of leakages is necessary. And <clears throat> different ways of handling the uh, documentation of air leakages. And this is one example. It's from uh, uh, apartments. Uh, in multi-story houses. A very simple thing that we could do was shutting all air intakes. We could turn the kitchen ventilator on just turning it high and we could register the pressure level. This gives a very good indication of leakage level, and it's very cost effectively. effectively. This, when it's very, very simple test, it was tempting to also measure air leakages. Uh, we did some testing that was of, of well, it gave quite good results. The point is. Just pressure difference is a good indication. So that was one of the backgrounds for developing low-cost equipment. There were made two products in Norway. And the products were modified ventilation fans. The initial was, as I said, um, to have a situation where you uh, Placed pan uh, or mounted the pan uh, in a building, and and there was do we get a pressure difference or do we not, which is a very simple approach. But of course, it was uh, developed further, and we we like the leakage flow as well. So this equipment is then used by craftsmen. It's stored at site, and an important part, part is it's available at the exact moment when the bing is ready and it is possible to do testing.
simplified method. It's not according to the uh, E standard. The uh, fans, uh, and here you see the uh, the ability of moving air. And this is the system. Um, uh, links to 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 these producers. One very important thing, and I think this is quite uh, still in Norway, is that, that we do quite a lot of early wind tide stage measurements. It's that we <coughs> do a test using uh, blowers or the, these. Uh, different kind of, kinds of equipment in a very early stage. Wars should be mounted, and also the outside airtight layer is uh, finished. In this case, you see a type of layer that is made up of uh, um, uh, roll products. And you can see light, light comes in. Testing the building in this level gives a very, very good indication of the level that you will acquire in the end. And it's extremely easy to detect leakages. Just a bit about this. When you, um, in very, uh, situations, use the blower in combination with uh, thermographic equipment and you use the heat, uh, these uh, thermal cameras to locate the leakages. The, the experience is that when you locate the uh, leakages using these cameras and you there the inside where you have these observations, you end up with a very small change, a very small improvement of e uh, leakage uh, levels. So, uh, and, and this is explainable. Uh, the that locating leakages at the early stage, just feeling with your hands, is a good approach. Then it's extremely easy to correct. And in this case, the uh, tape systems, you locate a big uh, uh, crack, a big leakage, and then you you mend it, and it is extremely uh, cost-effective. So this is something that's happening in Norway to a quite large extent, not only in small buildings, but also in some build, uh, bigger buildings as well. The lunches, uh, um, industry have to be helped into how to uh, uh, draw conclusions from the measurements. And of course, one important factor is that you all uh, way through the uh, process use the finished state volume when you normalize uh, early wind tide stage values as well. You don't use the higher uh, volumes that you have because you have uh, well, you add the thickness of the walls and uh, things like that. So you all use the finished state volume. And of course, the uh, importance of the internal moisture breaking layer is uh, of importance. Uh, as you saw in the film, uh, these... Uh, um, uh, tails and these uh, uh, um, uh, shits and, th and things that were used around the, the ducts and the pipes were on the outside of the building. A finished state air tightness measurement value that counts in, when you compare with governmental requirements. Uh, there has been uh, several um, uh, examples that the early tide stage level of the measurement is quite, and then, then at the end you measure once more, and then the 
uh, they just increase. That of course not happen, but it does, and there are several reasons. It has to do with uh, what is done with the wound barrier layer uh, after this measurement, like uh, mounting chimney or drilling holes and things like that. This presentation phase is a very, very interesting uh, phase where we are. Uh, what we um, see and has been happening uh, during these uh, last uh, few years is that there have been national and regional contests between firms, and they uh, compete in acquiring the lowest leakage number. And uh, it's just like uh, football games between uh, cities in Norway. The understanding of the role of invisible air is greatly improved. We have to, think, uh, we have to remember that the participants in this part of the building industry is, uh, do not have very big errands with the consequences of uh, leakages. But they do their own measurements and uh, learn by doing. Uh, uh, they a very inspiring process for them, actually. Uh, the um, uh, feedback from the building in the industry is that learning actually is quite fun. This is those who participate. And I don't really know uh, to what an extent this particip uh, participation takes place, but we think that quite a, a large part of the building industry uh, is participating in this. And is saved, which is nice. I had a question mark after it's simple, of course. This is old uh, leakage testing equipment from many years back. It's full. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, uh, Tom, for your interesting presentation. Um, maybe we can uh, take one quick question, which uh, was related to the previous presentation, but also to your presentation, I think. Uh, we have a question regarding the, uh, the wind there. And uh, maybe, Marina, you can uh, check yes. the question. Yes. Um, yes. So maybe Peter or Tom uh, are able to help. Uh, but essentially, the question is, um, in the movie we saw before, um, we see that some joints in the exterior of the wind bar were sealed. Is, uh, is this common practice in Norway, uh, the fact that the exterior wind buyers are sealed completely? Peter or uh, Tom, can you help with this question? Uh, I have some. I don't you hear me. Uh, I have some technical problems, but uh, we can hear. Uh, hmm? We hear you. Oh, that's that's good. <laughs> that's good. I'm trying to launch uh, the the application. Um, uh, I'm sorry. C could you repeat the the the, the question again? Yeah, Little. sure. So we've seen um, in the video that some joints in the exterior wind barrier were sealed, yes. and the question is uh, whether uh, sealing the exterior wind barriers completely is uh, a common practice in Nord in Norway. Yes, it is. It is absolutely a common practice, and we see this as a an important uh, 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 way and, and a, let's say, cost-effective way of acquiring low leakage numbers. Of course, we use <coughs> materials, um, external, uh, external materials that are uh, vapor, very open to vapor uh, transport. We do not want 
air to flow through these uh, uh, outer layers. It has a double function, you could say, Tomord, and that is that uh, you're limiting inflation, but at the same time you're reducing the uh, convection, the insulation layer. So it's important to have a paper or something that prevents uh, winds kind of uh, circulating through the insulation. So it's, this is a tra tradition uh, of uh, yeah, building in uh, Norway for, for, for a long time. Okay, well, thank you very much for answering this question. And uh, I think, uh, well, th there's probably uh, uh, other questions that will uh, come uh, during the uh, during uh, the next presentation, which will be given by, by Peter. Uh, so, Peter, if you are ready, we can proceed with your presentation. And then we'll uh, have uh, a couple of more minutes to uh, uh, take questions after your presentation. Okay. Sure. 